Regato Rosi que te que lingredos, Raba Baba Baba Zigedigri, Limbro Tasa Takarababos, Recato Limbre Gedere, Yesa que tosta, Masa Cata Limbre Goro Seke Libra Gadara, Yimbro Dosi Cato Limbre Gedere. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for another session of God before you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for this moment before you again, O Lord. We honor you. We lift your name on high. We adore you, King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, all wise God. We have come to learn of you today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are going to teach us afresh. We give you praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for every hour we've spent, O oh Lord, in learning new things. We thank you for the, for the revelation you've been putting in our hearts. Uh, we give praise and honor to your name in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Even this evening as we started, uh, as we are gathered before him again this Tuesday, Tuesday happened to be uh, our moment of word nurture. Word nurture is our version of Bible study. Amen. Because the spirit of the Lord nurture us. Uh, the, the foundation of every child of God is to be nurtured by the word of God. And right now, we have come again to be nurtured. God bless you as you are joining us. God bless you as you are seated. God bless you as you are listening. The Lord will enlarge your, your understanding today in Jesus' mighty name. The spirit of the living God will open your heart to learn today in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to also, I want to also, um, let you know that you need to deal with every form of distraction. You need to deal with the spirit of distraction. Praise God. One thing the devil, the devil does is to cause distraction. At the moment that you know that he knows that you are going to be blessed. At the moment that he knows that your spirit is open for a new thing, is open to a new thing from God, it's going to cause distraction. Amen. And I, you, you know my, my favorite scripture in the book of uh, First Kings? Let me quickly read it to you. It said, as the building was being built, when Solomon was building, and uh, th- there was a description there that actually talked about, about not having noise around you. Amen. And we're going to turn into prayer points right now before we go. We are already 15 minutes behind, but I believe God tonight that we'll be able to cover enough ground. Praise God. Those of you that are coming in, I will admonish you. Let us come early uh, to class. Let us bring our Bible writing materials and come with a teachable spirit. And then somebody come with a teachable spirit as the Spirit of the Lord will teach you. Praise God. I want to just read a verse to you in First Kings chapter 6. Amen. Somebody, First Kings chapter 6. First Kings chapter 6 and verse 7. Uh, most of you know I always refer to this very scripture. Uh, and the house, when it was in building, when the house was in building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. Amen. I, 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 because of time, because of our topic today, uh, and because we've been teaching this series, Wisdom for Living, uh, I would not want to uh, be tempted to go into preaching with this verse. But I just want us to let us know, uh, while the Lord has given instruction to Solomon how to build the house, you are a building in, this, in the realm of the Spirit that is being built. Your life is a building that is being built. Your life is a temple. You say you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your spirit is the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So the Bible now says when that house was in building, he said it was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither. Which means that the stone that was used in building the house was done with, was made at the quarry at a place of noise and dust and dirt. I don't want to preach it. I just want to let you understand something. What was the reason why God said that that stone must, must the stone must be made ready? He said, uh, uh, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. 
so that there will not be any, there will not be noise, there will not be, there will not be hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron hard in the house while it's just in building. So you, number one, you are a building of the Lord. Number two, we are like stones in the, being put in the one building, which is the building of God. Amen. And it says that that stone that will be used in building the side must be made ready so it is brought and just be fixing it. You have a place in the kingdom that is place is ready for you. When the Lord forms you, just bring you and put you there. So that there will be no noise. Noise is a distraction. Noise slows down destiny. Noise causes delay. Noise at times stops the work. You are going to even pray, my Father, my God, I remove every noise that has slowed my life down. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I decree this afternoon, every noise that has slowed my destiny down, I counsel you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray. Maso koto limbra de voce, e rabado zante kapoli dare kata, rebreta ke ruzo keto, en bajaza gadu lembro sote libra. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The house when it was in building was built of stone made ready. Built of stone made ready. Say ready. Built of stone made ready before it was brought thither. So that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor tool of iron heard in the house. Hammer, a machotiki. Even the Bible said the word of God is like hammer. Oh God, I try not to preach these verses. It will to be for another day. Hammer also can be used by the enemy to do what? To compress, to beat down anybody that wants to be built. Today we are gathered before the Lord to be built. Every weapon that the enemy must have positioned or fashioned or prepared to beat your destiny down is destroyed. That weapon is destroyed in the name of Jesus. So that there will not be hammer heard, so that there will not be any axe there. So that there will not be any tool of iron, axe can cut. I speak to you today. Any power that has brought satanic axe into your life to cut your destiny short, to cut your career short, to cut your marriage short, to cut your finances short, to cut your Christian life short. I pray today, in the name of Jesus, their axe be destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I promise you I'm not going to preach that verse, so I want to stop right there. I just want to let you know the importance of removing noise from your life. The house when it was in building. The Lord made sure the stone that was used to build the house was prepared at the quarry. For those of you that know how quarry is, I always tell you, those of you that have listened to me preach this verse, uh, sometime in 2005 was there about, I had a project that I had to do for the uh, the uh, a, depa- a project in the, the World, uh, World Bank Group. And I had to go to different quarries in different places in Nigeria. And I went to different quarries. I understand what happens in quarry. That project, uh, that project was a mining industry project. We were trying to build up a business for a particular person. Hallelujah. And because I understand the operation of, of a quarry, I know what happens there. A lot of noise, a lot of dirt. Every dirt that has come upon you before now, this word of God that will come to you is going to erase it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As we move forward, uh, uh, the topic that we've been teaching is called wisdom, wisdom for living. Wisdom for living. Amen. We are exposing what uh, the analysis of the, 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 the wonderful wisdom of God in the life of man. Praise God. And I said that wisdom for living is a class. It's a class taken from our school, the School of Spiritual Resource Management. The School of Spiritual Resource Management is one of the schools of Eden Ministerial and Bible Institute. Praise God. And you come to look at, come to think of it, wisdom is the principal thing. That's what the scripture says. No matter who you are, where you are, what you have, without wisdom, everything that makes you, everything that you have is a waste. Come to look at it. The life of every man must be built in wisdom. Wisdom is what you should crave for. Wisdom. So when, when, when you hear somebody or people preaching and teaching wisdom, we need to listen. We need to go learn more. Amen? Wisdom is what you need. The skillful man would not have achieved the, the feat of his skills without wisdom. It was wisdom that brought the beautiful cars in manufacture, amen. The wisdom, amen. Apart from the wisdom of man, we are now talking about the supernatural wisdom, the wisdom of God. 
where you are seated today and listening to me, I want your spirit to connect with the spirit of this word, the spirit of the word of God. For God to fill you with the wisdom of God, not wisdom of man. And not carnal wisdom, not, not satanic wisdom, not demonic wisdom. But the Spirit of God Almighty will pour out every other wisdom that is contesting with the wisdom of God in you. Amen. Wisdom is what you need. Do you know that a very rich man can lose his riches to a wise man? Amen. And many of those that are living in, 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 in operating in fraud and scam, they, they are operating their own level of wisdom, wisdom, carnal wisdom, and demonic wisdom. Is devilish wisdom. How much more the wisdom of God would have done, would have worked for you? If you go to school and earn your degrees, combined with the wisdom of God, imagine what you can do. What you should pray for every day is to say, Lord, give me wisdom for today. I was thinking about the man that knelt on the neck of George Floyd. Most of today, apart from praying and meditating, I was watching and listening to the funeral. The, 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 the procession and the, and the final service of the man, Judge Floyd. He was buried more than so many presidents will be buried. His burial today was, his burial and even every protest and all that went just because of his name, it is all beyond his name, more than a king. And we conclude that we said, this guy had a destiny that he could not fulfill. So I was thinking, this guy that knelt on his neck that day, if he had known, he would have called off for work. Wisdom. If the devil knows that the glory that would have come after the resurrection of Christ would be this much, the, the Bible said they would not have crucified the God of glory. They would not have crucified our Christ. His death and resurrection brought the wisdom that we are praying today. I want to speak to somebody today. Maybe you have done something in the past that did not look like wisdom. God can still restore unto you if you ask for the wisdom of God right now. Wisdom for restoration. Can somebody pray for I seek wisdom for restoration tonight. I, speak, I seek wisdom for restoration. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible says wisdom is good. With an inheritance, he said, and by it there is a profit to them that see the sun. There's a profit to them that see the sun. Did you know here when the Bible said that? He said, Say not thou what is the cause of the former days that are better than these. He said, Because you have not taught wisely for you to say your former days are better than these. That God that has given you life knows that your tomorrow is going to be greater than your past. So it is wisdom that will make you think right and say the right thing. Now the scripture says, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, like I always tell you. Wisdom is a defense. A plus B is C. Amen? It says, wisdom is a defense. If A plus B is C and, C, and D plus E is also, is, is also C, it means they are the same factors. So, but he said there is one thing that makes a difference. He said one thing that makes wisdom and money to be different. Even though both of them are, uh, is called defense, if you put the equation down and look at it in your, in your quadratic also, in your simultaneous equation, look at them simultaneously. He said one thing makes a difference. He said for the excellency of knowledge, the privilege, the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those that have it. It didn't say wisdom gives life to people that have money. We have had that before. I will tell you today, every day when you wake up, ask God to give you wisdom for that day. Every week before you set up, every morning, Monday morning, 5 a.m., we pray together. We call it Order My Steps, O oh Lord. It's a program that we started even way back in Africa to ask for wisdom for that week. Every month we have our seal of dominion three days before the... Three, the last three days of the month and the first three days of the month, seeking dominion and asking God to give us wisdom for the month. Hallelujah. So we started, I want to make sure if we can round up this topic, this class wisdom for living today. We were able to look at uh, uh, how to contact this wisdom. We were able to point out a few, few areas that we can contact wisdom. But I want to quickly say, among those things we mentioned, amen, if you remember, we said you can contact wisdom through the word of God, through the fear of God, not the dread of God, but the fear of God, being, a, being born again through your new birth. 
you can contact go and go and listen to the message go to the youtube channel and listen to part, uh lesson two of wisdom for living and also we say you can contact wisdom through prayers the book of james 5 to 8 he said if any lack wisdom ask we can contact wisdom through the Holy Ghost. And I mentioned the laying on of hands. I was describing what happens during impartation of any form of impartation. Either through putting oil on your head or laying on of hands or through impartation through the word. What happens, the way I describe it to you, is the spirit of that word that goes forth on you. So, even in wisdom, in contacting wisdom, is the spirit of wisdom that comes upon you. The spirit of wisdom comes. There is what you call the spirit of wisdom. There is what you call the power of wisdom. There is what you call the force of wisdom. Now, the spirit of, the, of wisdom is what is impacted on you. Even when I pray for you, you cannot just get wisdom immediately. No. It is the spirit of wisdom that comes upon you. Plus the spirit of the word that is spoken. He said the word that I speak, their spirit and their life. Amen, somebody. And remember, I said wisdom gives life. So you can also contact wisdom by good companion. He did that work with a wise man will be wise. Good companion. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Proverbs 27 verse 7. The people you, the people you move with will determine your destiny a lot. Most of you are seeking to get closer to God, but you are moving with the wrong friends. It can't work. You can influence them if you are wise. I'm not saying cut off your friends. But if you tell me your friends, I will know who you are. I cannot have my best friend being an unbeliever. It's not possible. I can have an acquaintance. I can have a friend. My best friend cannot be an unbeliever and I'm a preacher. It does not make it. There's no balance. You cannot be a child of God or someone that is seeking God or that you are seeking heaven. And your best friend. If I don't believe that your best friend is operating that demonic influence, your best friend is eating with the devil every day, and you are seeking heaven. You know, it can't work. One will influence the other. One will influence the other. And it's very easy to pull down than to lift up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, good companion. If you work with good companion, people that are wise, people that are anointed with wisdom, you will be wise. You grow in wisdom. Soul winning also gives you wisdom. You remember that scripture I gave you in Daniel 12 and verse 3? Those that, those that be wise. He said they shall, they, shall lead men, they, shall, they shall lead men to righteousness. Hallelujah. There are so many ministrations. But today we want to quickly look at, okay, how do I stir up this wisdom in my life? Remember I said there is a spirit of wisdom. I said there is power of wisdom. And I said there is force of wisdom. Let me tell you the difference between the three. Through the way you contact wisdom, either by sitting under a teaching and the, the anointing upon the man, the man of God that is teaching, it has an anointing for wisdom. Amen. Oh, 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 I'm trying not to digress too much. Do not misplace wisdom with the spirit of counsel. Do not misplace wisdom with the spirit of discernment. They enhance each other. All right, somebody? Amen. Now, through all forms of either laying on of hand by the by prayer or by the word of God or by by uh, ministrations or other ministrations communion and all that, what comes to you is the spirit of wisdom. When you ask for wisdom, you are not wise immediately. What comes to you is the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah! The spirit of a thing carries the characteristics of that thing. The spirit of a man is carrying the characteristics, the nature of that man. The spirit of a man can be called the DNA of that man, transferable. So the spirit of wisdom comes upon you. How does it become the power of wisdom? By the time it resides in you, and you are operating through staring, 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 and staring at what we are going to look at today. It becomes power of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom will come upon you without work or working with it, without understanding. It does not become the power of wisdom. What does power do? Power dominates. Power has dominion. I don't like the word dominate personally. Amen? I don't want to dominate. You want to have dominion. 
power and have dominion. Power gives you influence. Power moves you. It's dynamic in nature. So the spirit of wisdom comes upon you as you hear, as you study the word, as you meditate on the word. It becomes power. But until what does until that power begins to achieve its purpose, you are not done. So when you begin to influence things around you, your life and your domain, it is called the force of wisdom. It is the force of wisdom that will make wisdom to open for you. You have the power of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom has come upon you. But the force of wisdom will make doors to open for you. The force of wisdom will give you influence among all other people. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Praise God. So, so when you work, as you are listening to me, you are craving, you are seeking God. Give me wisdom. I need wisdom for my career. You wonder some people, you don't expect them to go to school. And they go to school, they come out with good grades. You don't expect some people to be good in their job. And they are doing that work. Probably somewhere, God has endued and endowed them with wisdom. There is a wisdom for every area of your life. You look at your, your, your place where you are today, and you feel you cannot do what you have been asked to do. It's because you have not asked for wisdom for it. When you ask for wisdom for it, the grace of God that is already there will allow you to operate. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The level of wisdom in you is a deposit that you need, and it needs to be stirred up. So that your life can be sweetened. When you stir up, that, that sweetened comes from when you put sugar in your salt, in your soup, you stay. So the, the, your life, when you stir the wisdom of God in you, you are, you are bringing out the beauty of that wisdom. So you begin to think of the spirit of wisdom, the power of wisdom, and the force of wisdom, the way I just told you. So today we want to look at, we want to look at how do I stir up wisdom, knowing fully whether you have prayed for wisdom. Your wisdom is your eye of understanding. Say so. My wisdom is my eye of, of understanding. Hallelujah. Now, that wisdom there, replace it with my mind. Say, your mind, my mind is the eye of my understanding. My mind. So for you to operate in wisdom, wisdom for a particular thing you are praying God to answer, you must begin to nurture your mind. If we have time, I wanted to teach you how to develop that your mind, which we are going to do. How do I develop my mind? There is something that I do every day, or every time that I'm going to minister, or any time I'm going for an important occasion. After I've prepared, I sit down, I begin to picture what I, where I'm going to. You're having an interview. All you need to do, having prepared, you cannot completely prepare. You cannot, pre you cannot have 100% preparation. It is the grace of God that will help you to come to that 100%. Praise the Lord. Preparation is very good. But until you begin to bring your preparation into the operation of your mind, you will not picture where you are going. You are having interview. All you need to do, having prepared, sit down and begin to picture Begin to use your mind. What kind of question will come? Not in nervousness. How am I going to answer? What am I going to wear? Okay, this will come. This is the way I will answer. Every preacher, that is why I respect people that are in full-time full ministry. And I also respect those people that are in full-time uh, full ministry and full-time job. Why? Because you need time. When you see people do eight to is eight to nine or eight to five, eight to something job, and they do and they work maybe two jobs and you are a preacher. Oh no, 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 it can never be the same. Because you need all your time, not only to study the word, to hear from God, you need time to sit down and meditate. So when you see People preach, come to the pulpit, continue to preach, teach you every week. Honor God, reverence God, and fear God. So what I do every time, I sit down, having studied the word of God, I begin to bring forth those things I've studied. I begin to even picture the while I go to the pulpit, the things, how I will start. 
I begin to allow the Holy Spirit to even show me things. Praise God. I'm just talking about stirring the wisdom of God in you. The place of your mind. The place of your mind. The place of your mind. That is where the devil wants to mess with. Don't allow the devil to suggest anything into your mind. You are too much for the devil to whisper to you. Cast out every whispering. Did you not hear what the scripture said in First Kings 6, 7 that I read to you earlier? I tried not to dwell. I could dwell on that verse for two hours. That one verse 7. He said the building, when it, the house, when it was in building, he said it was built with a stone made ready. And that stone was brought from, before it was brought thither. Which means that the mind, let me just permit me to use some language. It didn't want noise, that noise at the quarry to come to the place where the building was being formed. The enemy wants to bring noise into your mind. The enemy wants to, want to whisper things to you. The enemy wants to confuse you, but you not get you because you are covered. The blood of Jesus Christ is covering your mind. Can somebody use it now? Blood of Jesus Christ. I protect my mind. I protect my soul with the precious blood of the Lamb. I will not hear the whisper of the enemy. You are preparing to travel. The enemy is whispering that you will have accident on the way. You are preparing to travel. The enemy is saying, what if the play for? You are preparing to do interviews. Say you, you, you are, you, what if you fail? What if they ask you questions? The enemy is whispering. Begin to release the blood of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth. I wish that the child of God wants to say, come on now, don't be too holy. Don't tell me. That you are bishop, archbishop, apostle, senior apostle, chief apostle, but the devil does not whisper to your ears, you are just blaspheming. If you say the devil doesn't whisper to your ears, you are blaspheming. My Jesus is the word of God. The devil come to whisper to him. How much more you? The devil whispers. It is whether you receive it. My Lord said it is written. When the enemy comes to whisper to us, we tell the devil it is written. And we begin to quote the scripture and say, no, that thought is not mine. For the Lord has not given me the spirit of fear, but given me the, given me the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Self-discipline. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wisdom can be, spared, can be stirred up. You want to say, how? Reading and studying the word of God. Reading and studying the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 105. Look at it quickly, that I may know the deep things in your word. Psalm 119, 119, 119. If you are there, open your scripture quickly. Let me show it to you. 119. Psalm 119. Yeah? Are you there? Reading and studying the word of God will help. What is wisdom? Wisdom, wisdom is the right application, the excellence of knowledge. He said, "In all you're getting, get understanding, because it is understanding that will that will that will culminate into wisdom." So he said, "The word of God is a lamp unto my feet. The word of God. I want to stop the wisdom of God in me, and I don't. I'm not studying the word. No, it's not the. We don't have it." You are praying for wisdom of God and you don't have time to study the word. You don't have time to listen to anointed messages. You don't have time for the scriptures. No, it's not balanced. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what I said. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, O oh God. If the word of God becomes a lamp to your feet, then, you, then your feet will put light to your path. And what it becomes a light to your path. Wisdom. So you can see that based on that scripture, the mixture of words that the lamp of God is wisdom. The scripture says Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God and is the power of God. So the word of God becomes your wisdom, becomes your light. You can always defeat. Let me tell you something. I was trying to give you an example of when a pastor is 26 years old. And you see parents, 60 something, they come and sit before him. For counsel, you want to compare a 66-year-old man with a 26-year-old man? No. It, it takes the spirit of counsel and understanding of the word of God that gives us the wisdom to sit down and counsel people. Wisdom of God. So you cannot without the word of God. I want you to speak to yourself. Lord, 
I pray for the grace for your word today. I pray. The grace to study your word. To study your word. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet. Let your word lighten my path from now on. Do not let me walk in darkness. Let me walk in light. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, somebody. You want to stir up, you want to stir up wisdom in your life? Meditation of the word. Meditation of the word. How do you meditate? Meditate on these things daily. So you are saying the word of God. How do you meditate? You begin to reflect on it. I just told you how I meditate. No matter the few minutes that I need to speak to the people of God, I must create time to meditate. I do not take the people of God for granted. I do not take the word of God for granted and think that the Bible is in my head and I just come from a noisy, my mind is noisy with work and everything. My, my, my mind is noisy with the things going on in my life and I just want to come and stand before the children of God. No. You must create a few minutes to do what? To meditate on the things either that you have already studied or you want to take time to study it. Carry the word of God daily. We always advise ourselves, study to live, not study to preach. The word of God you study daily, that you study all the time, will help you in your life when you come to any form of, any form of uh, challenges in future. You're trying to stir up wisdom. You're trying to stir up wisdom. Meditation. Meditating on the word. Hallelujah. Joshua 1.8 your mental focus is your ticket for locating the, high, the hidden treasure of an issue. Every issue in your life has a hidden treasure. Every case in your life has a hidden treasure. And now this is what makes some people, they are very good at meditating, but they are not good at dissipating. Every time there is an issue, either between in your home, in marriage, or in, at work, or in generally, you want to meditate. You want to create a mental focus. You want to focus on the things of God concerning that case. You may have struck it, but you are not now able to dissipate through the power of meditation. A lot of things now come into play. The words of man, you begin to say, oh, if I say this now, oh, if I do this now, oh, it's not the right environment, oh. It's not the right time. A lot of things come into play. So you need to factor in all those things as you focus, as you meditate. Concerning an issue, that's what I'm saying. Why? Because the reason I said that is mental focus has become your ticket or your key to locating the hidden treasure of every issue of your life. Your mental focus. Work is good. Because out of it comes reward. But not job. Turn your job to work. It becomes your ministry. God will bless it. And as you do so, let the Spirit of God minister to you as you are working. As you are going home. So that your mental focus can be sharp. The act of meditation is what brings the future into the present. And the act of medication, meditation produces wisdom. You see what your mental focus can do? It brings the future into the present. Faith is now. So where you want to get to, you get the mental focus. You bring it to the present because you have thought based on the word of God. Don't meditate on psychic things. Don't meditate on you are a Virgo, you are a Paishan, you are what is the other one? You are a Sagittarius, you are a Cosmopolitan. You are, don't drop this nonsense out of your life. Let the word of God fill you up. She give you the right picture. I've given you two ways you can stir up wisdom in your life. How else can you stir up wisdom? Through prayers. You can stir up wisdom in your life by praying. Let me tell you something. Praying in the Holy Ghost is very good. In case you are a listener or you are under the, under the school of the prophet or the school of the spirit, and you are not able to pray in the Holy Ghost yet with evidence of that's baptizing the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in tongues. Seek it. Let's pray together. I'm just saying it because it has helped me a lot. When I don't know what to do, Jude 20 says, he said, he said, building up your holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. 
that you don't know what to do. Now, now, I wish I had a glass cup to put before you. And in that glass cup, I want you to listen. In that glass cup, there's a uh, Coke is dark. Coke is, uh, Coke is a little bit opaque. And I pour in some Coca-Cola inside, cola, inside the glass cup, all right? Transparent cup. And I bring in clean water. And I begin to pour it inside. That is how praying in the Holy Ghost does. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's, when, it's like when you start to pour water, clean water, into that, into that uh, bottle of cola. You'll find out that it begins to, so the, cola, the cola begins to get filled, the cup gets filled, and start pouring out, and start pouring out. And it gets to a point you don't see any opaque opaque color. You don't see any cola in it. You just see white. When you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you get to a point that you cannot control what you are praying in the Holy Ghost anymore. When I start to pray in the Holy Ghost, it's because uh, some, w w we are not being taught. You think, oh, some, nobody can just pray in the Holy Ghost like that. You must fall into the Spirit. How do you fall into the Spirit? No. Prayer generally helps you to stir the wisdom. Remember the word is to stir up. You have contacted wisdom. You have contacted it. Now you want to stir it up. That's why I started by describing the spirit of wisdom, the power of wisdom, and the force of wisdom. So, by adventure you have, the spirit of wisdom is already upon you. From the, way I'm, the way you are listening to this message now, you need to stir it up. And I've mentioned two ways. And you want to pray. You can do general prayer. Amen, somebody. Romans 8, 26, you can pray. You can commune with God. You can pray. When you pray, it's your spirit that is giving you advantage to pray. So the cheapest way to pray is to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. So you see that when you start to pray in the Holy Ghost, you are in control of it. But it gets to a point, the spirit of the Lord take over. You cannot control it anymore. So you are, you are, you are now speaking the language of angels. Now the spirit of the Lord is now taking charge and speaking. Maru Zakate Lebradia. Now, by the time you are blessed with another gift of interpreting, and when you begin to understand what you are praying in the Holy Ghost, even though you cannot control it, you are have, uh, uh, that's another teaching, I don't want to digress too much, you are having understanding of what is coming out of you. When you do that, God dwells, your, the wisdom of God in you begins to enlarge, because you are building up your faith. You are building up your faith. You are building up your faith. You cannot separate faith and wisdom. No. I want you to pray while you are there right now. Oh my God. I want you to pray. Uh, 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 yeah, we, we, we started at 7 30, even though you didn't come in, we still have some time. I want you to pray for the wisdom of God. Pray for the wisdom. Ability to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you can't, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost for just for a few minutes. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know where you, the things that is going on, the things going on in the realm of the spirit. You don't understand the depth of what you are firing out, but you just understand some things have been open. It's like doors have been open for you in the realm of the spirit, and you are entering a new place. You are entering a new place. So you don't know when it has ended and when it is not ended. So you don't even say in Jesus' name. You are praying in the Holy Ghost. You are saying in Jesus' name. Do you know what you are saying? No, they don't work together. Can you come and release upon yourself now? Go ahead, go ahead. Maruse kote predile tusta. Maju kakolo bredo sente. Nimbrado sakate yegeda. Rubi kato lombre gide yedeba. Zadara. Ruska telo zepati yanamalas. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Your spirit has a better advantage when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Anytime you feel fear around you, don't wait for the don't wait any longer. Bust in the spirit. Bust in the spirit. Somebody came to walk in the house some time ago. He came to walk in the house with some other man. He was doing some things that I didn't like and I didn't want to confront him. Oh my God. Wisdom is not able to direct. He was doing some things. And I just knew I, I, well, I confronted him later. But before I confronted him, I burst out in tongues. I began to pray the Holy Ghost. He looked at me from, from afar. He felt like, what? I prayed in the Holy Ghost. I left him to be doing his rubbish. I later, I took the face mask. I took the face mask from where it is. I took a face mask, a brand new one. I went to give him. I said, don't 
ever come near me. Don't ever enter that house without a face mask. Don't come near me. Stop touching me. If you do it, I will send you away. His friend was laughing. Now, what happened was, right from that moment before, before that, I, was, I respected him in the physical. So I couldn't confront him. But when I prayed in the Holy Ghost, it was like I should slap him. Permit me to use that word. Not, not like physical fighting. It was like I should deal with him. That is, boldness came upon me to do the right thing. Hello. That was why I could go and give him a mask outside. I said, don't come into the house again. You walk in all around and even touching me. And then I look, my friend, my friend. I look at him like that. I say, what? Seriously? Now, don't let us digress. One thing that is the process of praying in tongues. Now, how do you stir up? How do you stir up wisdom? You live a praiseful life. Say, I will praise God. I want to hear you say, I will praise God continually. I want you to say, 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 I'm going to praise God continually. Are you living a praiseful life? Do you praise God all the time? The way I sing in the bathroom at times, the way I sing in the bathroom at times, I'm like, hmm, this bathroom world will one day be singing back to me. At times I sing loud, at times I don't sing loud. At times I'm singing within. Live a praiseful life. Praise God all the time. You are not praising the devil, you are praising God. Let me quickly open something to you. Don't worry, we we'll have some few few more minutes. We're gonna, I'm going to take you to a point tonight that uh, 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 you, will, you will be thanking God after we, we left this class today. Praise God. Living a praiseful life. Praiseful life. He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 16 of Ephesians 5. I don't want to read from the beginning. Amen. He said, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but, on, but understanding, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. I have not ended speaking to yourself in, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21 now said, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, what I'm trying to bring out there is the result. I said, be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess. Don't, don't, be, don't, don't, don't pick me up on that. Ah, Pastor, the Bible says we should drink wine, but not in excess. God will help you. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. How? What is the result? The result is this. When I am not drunk with wine in excess and I'm filled with the Spirit all the time, because of the understanding of what the will of God is, these are the results. Number one, speaking to yourself in Psalms. Number two, and hymns and spiritual songs. All right, number two, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Number three, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And number four, submitting yourself one to another. If you do that, it will be easy to carry out this. <clears throat> Why it came in there is that once your life is a praiseful life, it becomes easy for you to relate with people. Say amen. Let me hear you say Amen. It say it will be easy for me to relate with other people. There is no, I'm not a people person. It is true that some people you think they are not a people person, right? It's not all the time. There are moments in your life that you are not a people person. You cannot be not a people person 100% all the time, no. There are times you are not a people person because something is going on in your mind and in your heart and it's, it's occupying you. So your, 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 uh, your uh, 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 desire to be disturbed by people is not there. The moment you discover as a child of God, you are 100% not a people person, you have a problem, go to your pastor quickly. You need deliverance. You need to be prayed for. 
You understand what I'm saying? It's lack of wisdom. There's no wisdom there. Because when you continue to do this in the understanding of the will of God and being filled with, with, with the Holy Spirit all the time, you cannot be an isolation. There will be time you relate with people. There will be time you withdraw because you want to withdraw to build yourself in the Spirit. And every time you withdraw, make sure it is the things of God that makes you withdraw, not the things of the world. Can we say amen? Another way of staring. How many have I given you so far? Four. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. By reading and studying the Word of God through meditation, through prayers, living a praiseful life, through communion. What does communion do? Hallelujah. Let me take you to Luke 24 again. You remember those guys on the way to Emmaus? A Sabbath day's journey. A Sabbath day's journey means it's not far. It means that after the Sabbath service, they can always walk down. It's not, a, it's not far. When you hear something, it's a Sabbath day journey. It means it's something you can walk within two, uh, an hour to two hours. Anywhere you hear it's a Sabbath day journey, it means it's not far. Amen. It's about seven miles. Praise God. It's about seven miles. Now, apart from that, communion, communion table. Whenever we are going into communion, do you remember those of you very close to me? The prayer I always ask you to pray. I always start the Father, we believe in the ministry of the communion table, and we believe in the ministry of the blood of Jesus Christ, right? We believe in the ministry of the communion table. You need to believe in the ministry of the communion table. Every time you go into communion, you are, you are, you are at the table. He said, do this in remembrance of me. You are invoking that last supper. You are invoking the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. He said, if you eat of me. You remember in the scripture, the Bible said, many left him the day he said they should eat his flesh. He said, wow. I didn't know you are from, uh, don't let me mention a tribe. I didn't know you are from, so you eat flesh. They left him and some remain. They met somebody. So when you are at the communion table, you are asking the Lord, open my eyes, open my understanding. I want to, I want to commune with you by eating your flesh and your body. Let me read Luke 24. Uh, uh, Luke 24, quickly. Uh, let, me, let me show you something right there. Uh, let me show you something right there. In verse 30. Are you in a hurry already? He said, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, he blessed it, and break, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. That was the story of the two guys. They were going to Emmaus. These two guys were going from, from the place in, 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 in at the upper room area, amen, in Jerusalem. They were going to Emmaus, not far away. And Jesus Christ just showed up there. I'm waiting for a, 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 I'm looking for, thank God for our brother, a movie director, amen, a film director. I'm going to tell them what to act. And Jesus just came on the road and appeared coming behind them. What are you guys talking about? Ah, are you the only one in town that doesn't know what has happened? I was, what is it? They said it. I said, oh, you people, you don't understand. Did the, the scripture not say? He started unreeling scriptures to them on the way. They didn't know. But they said it in their heart that it's only who is this guy that is telling us the scripture right from Old Testament. But look at what the scripture says. Amen. After the, it was night time, going to night time, and uh, he wanted to go away, they said, no, come and stay with us for the night. It's already night time. Just come and stay with us, and we continue tomorrow. He, he obliged them. He went into the place with them. The next thing is they wanted to break bread. And the Bible said, oh, my God, verse 29, but they constrained him, saying, abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into tarry with them. Verse 30. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took the bread, he blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Verse 31 is the key, and their eyes were open. I want three people that can pray right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, open my eyes. There are things in my life that you need to open my eyes, O oh God. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, open my eyes. Let my eyes of my understanding be open. Not just those your, not those your small, small eyes like my own. Not those your big, big eyeballs like my own. Not those your, your no, not those. I mean, my creation, my rules are there. Your spiritual eyes, your eyes of understanding. 
They were not blind. They were, oh, their eyes were open. But the Bible said their eyes open. Lord, open my eyes tonight. Ah, to see the wondrous things in your world. To see things that I need to see for me to be wise. Open your mouth and pray. We have like 15 minutes to round up this teaching today. Pray, pray, pray. I'm not stopping you from praying. Can you open your mouth and pray tonight? Open your mouth and pray tonight. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Masokoto. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. They knew him. The difference between you and your colleague at work is because your eyes are opened and you knew Christ. Oh. Remember the mental focus that has become your key to the hidden treasures in any issue, in any matter. Open my eyes, Lord, my spiritual eyes, my eyes of understanding. Let me see you in every situation. Let me see you in every matter. Let me see you in every case. Give me wisdom to handle my life. Give me wisdom to handle your people. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Can I hear amen from somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when he took the bread, that is communion. So anytime we are having communion, and you break the bread, like I was saying, you know, I always tell you, this one is a fact. I was in Catholic Church. I was a mass server. All right? We, we observed that. They told us that when you put the, the wafer in your mouth, you cannot open your mouth. Don't chew it. Just keep it there in your mouth. And I found out later, not anybody telling me, but by the Spirit of the Lord. The reason for that is, they don't want you to in your mouth and making mess. The secret of breaking the bread is for you to crush it. You must break. I'm not telling you, those of you close to me. When you take communion, you want to eat it, break it first. When you break it, crush it with your teeth. It relates to the crushing of the flesh of Jesus Christ. You crush it with your teeth. They were taught in those days when we are on the other side not to open your mouth, just stay there and do holy, be very holy. The, the body of Christ, you say amen, you put it, you bring out your tongue, they put it there, or they put it in your hand, amen. God punish racists, in Jesus' name, amen. And you put it in your mouth, and you don't want to chew it because they don't want you to make a mess like especially black man. You don't want a black man to be chewing his mouth before the, before the missionaries, the white missionaries, to be chewing your mouth and spitting everything. No, you must crush it. Now, I'm just saying this because I want to round up. Communion, when you break the bread and you drink the blood of Jesus Christ, ah, your eyes must open. Something must happen to your life. Stop taking communion traditionally. Take it as a supernatural thing. Hallelujah. I want to quickly round up. How again can I spare wisdom in my life? Hallelujah. <laughs> anointing. Anointing. First Samuel 16. Through anointing oil. Amen. Anointing. I already explained what happens when your head is anointed with oil. Nobody should, nobody should take it for granted. It's only that it's been misused by a lot of people. We met it in the scripture, not only in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, is any sick. He said the person will be anointed. In the scripture, you anoint your utensils, you anoint your car, anoint your TV, you anoint your utensils. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When your head is anointed with oil, First Samuel 16, the spirit of wisdom is stirred up in you. Let me open First Samuel. Quickly, First Samuel 16. I know you are. I, I know God. God of Heaven is touching something in your life right now, and you are almost shouting Hallelujah, and you are almost shouting Amen. I'm rejoicing with you already. Why? Because something powerful is going to begin in your life after you leave this class. Amen. Somebody, First Samuel 16. Look at the verse. Let me start from verse. Verse, uh, 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 verse 9. No, let me start from verse 10. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeriah? So let him curse, because the Lord had said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai, and to all his servants, Behold my son, 
which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord had bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will require me good for his curse in this day. Now here verse 13. And as David and his men went by the way, no, no, sorry. Okay, let me read, I'll take you to First Samuel. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei, they went on the hillside against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast us. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves. Jerry. Now, that is the, the that, old, that other scripture that I read is the anointing that flows in your life because of authority. Who can cause you? All right, but let's look at First Samuel 16. Sorry, I read that one, but when you carry the anointing of God, upon your life who can cause you the wisdom of god is flowing in your life because not the one that god has not caused hallelujah amen according to the order of balaam and balak then samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of brethren and the spirit of the lord came upon david from that day forward so samuel rose up and went to rabbi can you receive it now i want you to receive now Receive it now. The same spirit of love that came upon David here was the same spirit that was upon him in the other verse that I read that a man said he want to cause David. Who is he that has a mouth to want to cause you? When, you? when you carry the wisdom of God upon you through the oil of God that has been released upon your head, the spirit of God came upon him. Let me round up by stirring up of the spirit. Amen. Your association. Who do you move with? <laughs> Right association gives the right wisdom. Daniel chapter 2. Write it down, Daniel chapter 2. Go and read the whole of Daniel chapter 2. But Mark verse 17 and verse 18. The right association, I mentioned it earlier. May the Lord God Almighty open your understanding. I want you to pray. We have two to five more minutes to go. I don't want to teach further. I will defer the other teaching, the developing your uh, the mental development. Amen. Building capacity for your mental development as a child of God. And that's what I'm going to round up with next week. Next week, we are going to round up Wisdom for Living and start a new topic. So next week, I'm going to go into uh, uh, enhancing your mental capacity as a child of God. Enhancing your mental capacity as a child of God. A child of God must have higher mental capacity than a child of the devil. I want you to pray tonight. Lord, stir up the wisdom in me. Stir up your wisdom in me. Open your mouth and pray. Please open your mouth and pray. Tell the Lord to stir up his wisdom in you. Not your own wisdom, but the wisdom of God. Tell the Lord to stir his wisdom in you. Masuketo ni bragadea. Majaka tolo bregadea. Mesuketo embrati yama. Zeka tolo bregadu zekia. Masha tababa lengo dodo. I cannot hear you pray tonight. Oh Lord, stir up your wisdom in me. I do not want to be stagnant. Let your wisdom move me, move me forward. My marriage, my business, my ministry, my career will not be stagnant. Oh Lord, stir up your wisdom in my life. Morie tu zakate baya. Open your mouth and pray. Mazo kreto zibade. Yes, yes, yes. As the Lord, as the Spirit of the Lord, to stir up His wisdom in you. Say after me, my Father, my God. My Father, I shall not be a spiritual casualty. I shall, I shall not be a spiritual casualty in the name of Jesus. Because of wisdom of God, I will not be a spiritual casualty. It is the man that lacks wisdom that becomes casualty of the devil. I will not be a spiritual casualty, O oh God. By your wisdom, in the name of Jesus Christ, every reason that men have laid down that want to make me a casualty of men is cancelled today. By the blood of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. My glory, you will not be trapped. My glory, you will not be trapped. I will not be a spiritual casualty to anybody. In the name of Jesus Christ, Master Koto Lingredos, the Gata Yaka Zute Kenedet, Nimbro Tayadi Makuzoto. The Bible says that wisdom, it says, preserves the life of those that have it. It gives life to the one that have it. Oh God, let your wisdom today, uh, let it break the law of death over my life. Uh, 
I break the law of death over my life. I break the law of death over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you law of death of in my life, you are broken and destroyed today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I have the wisdom of God. I carry the wisdom of God. I carry the wisdom of God. I will not be a spiritual casualty. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not be a victim of occultic men and women. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God is enlarged in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody.